Poisson points, waiting times. A dangerous bend segment proceeds with caution. The Poisson process is a fundament in characterizing the theory of cues, congestions, arrival processes, and random scatter. At its heart, it is characterized by two requirements that in any interval, the number of arrivals is characterized by a Poisson variable with a certain mean arrival rate, say alpha, and furthermore, that in disjoint regions, the number of arrivals constitute independent trials. The listener may well feel that this is a very complex set of requirements, the consequences of which are not entirely apparent. And the listener might also recall my strident exhortations in Problems in Chance to always begin with a right understanding of the underlying probability space. So, what is the probability space that underlies a Poisson process? It would be wise to follow the sage advice of George Polier and begin with an elementary setting, the first simplest thing that characterizes the process. And if one thinks of the process as an arrival process, naturally enough, we think of time following to the right, and then an object of curiosity becomes the first arrival. So now let's focus on this. The first arrival occurs at some random point in time, and now naturally it is important to focus on the time of the first arrival. Let us promptly introduce a little bit of notation. Let us introduce x1 to denote the time at which the first arrival occurs. Naturally, x1 is a chance variable. What is its distribution? How do we compute probabilities relevant to x1? At this point, a key observation makes matters completely transparent. And to wit, that if you pick an arbitrary point in time, say t, the event that the first arrival occurs after that t is equivalent to saying that the number of arrivals up till t is exactly zero. Let me repeat that again. The event that the first arrival occurs after t occurs if and only if the event that there are no arrivals up till t occurs. And the moment we say something like this, we now have a direct path to calculating the probabilities associated with the time of first arrival. And so, directly, the probability that x1, the time of first arrival, exceeds a given value t, is exactly the probability that there are no arrivals up till t. But now, we have related the distribution of the first arrival time to the distribution of the number of arrivals, and we know exactly what this is. N of t is governed by a Poisson distribution with an expected value of alpha t. Therefore, in this case, all we have to do is look up the Poisson probabilities, p of k, with a parameter alpha t, put in k equal to zero, and just write down our observation. It's p, the Poisson probability of no arrivals in a duration t. Okay, now we just read out the answer. Right. If in the Poisson formula we put in k equal to zero, the fraction becomes one over one, and all that remains is a simple exponential form, e to the power minus alpha t. Naturally enough, you know, the probabilities decay with time, and they decay exponentially fast, and therefore, in a fit of originality, we call this the exponential distribution. Now notice how easily and simply we've computed a probability involving what on the surface appears to be a quite a complicated object. x1 is clearly a chance variable, but it is not discrete anymore. In fact, it takes a continuum of values. No matter, 
we can relate its distribution to that of the Poisson process N of t. In such a formulation, we already have all the information we need to calculate any relevant probability involving the time of first arrival. And as a sanity check, let us see how one can do one such calculation. So let's begin now. We know that the time of first arrival is governed by an exponential distribution, by which we mean that the probability that the time of first arrival exceeds any given positive time t is exactly e to the power minus alpha t. Now take a hand at evaluating a slightly more complex prob probability. Suppose s and t are positive real values and s is less than t. What are the chances that the first arrival occurs between s and t? Pause the lecture for a moment and see if we can make headway with this. If you find you're stuck, run the lecture again and you will see a hint appear. Here is a hint. We may partition the interval from 0 to t into two intervals. An interval from 0 to s and a disjoint interval from s to t. Or, if you want to put it in probabilistic terms, the event that the first arrival occurs at or before t is the same as saying that one of the two events occur, to wit, that the first arrival occurs on or before s, or the first arrival occurs after s and before t. Now, I'll pause the lecture again, and with this suggestive partition in hand, see if we can work through the probability. Now, let's begin an assault on the problem. We know that the interval from 0 to t can be partitioned into two subintervals, one from 0 to s and one from s to t. Additivity of probability measure tells us, therefore, that the probability that the first arrival is at or before t is a sum of two probabilities, that the first arrival is at or before s, together with the probability that the first arrival is between s and t. Let's rearrange this to focus on the probability of interest. And so the probability the first arrival lies between s and t is exactly the probability that the first arrival occurs at or before t, from which you take away the probability that the first arrival is at or before s. Again, this is just a consequence of additivity of probability measure. The two probabilities on the right are deal with probabilities that the first arrival is at or before a certain point in time. But we've already seen that the probability of the first arrival occurring after any given point in time is given in an exponential form. Now, all that remains is to invoke additivity once more, to massage these probabilities on the right, to get probabilities of the form that the arrival is after certain points in time. And here we go. Observe that the probability that the first arrival is before t added to the probability the first arrival is after t must give us 1. This is additivity, and similarly for s. All right, the terms 1 on the right-hand side cancel out. Let's rewrite the terms, and we obtain that the desired probability is given by the probability that the first arrival is after s, from which you take away the probability that the first arrival is after t. And now we simply read out the exponential forms. The first of the probabilities on the right is of the form e to the minus alpha s. The second of the probabilities on the right is of the form e to the power minus alpha t. And there we have it. Simple and elementary. The listener might want to play with this formulation to see how other relevant probabilities involving the first arrival come out.